I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back along to the Chronicles of Aguna Premium. Hope you're all well. I uh, hope you're all good. Hope you've all had a wonderful weekend so far. Uh, if you are watching this on the Chronicles of Aguna YouTube channel or listening via our normal feed, welcome uh, because this is a piece of content that is going to be released to the wider Chronicles of Aguna family uh, within a few days. Uh, but I wanted to get this out nice and early uh, to our members because I think this is a really relevant topic and a really relevant debate at the moment. Obviously, at the time of recording, Arsenal are just a couple of days away from the end of the transfer window. Uh, Arsenal fans feel uh, that they desperately need to bring in midfield cover. We lost Thomas Partey to an injury against Manchester City in the FA Cup. We don't know at the time of recording how serious that injury is or, or not serious. We're going to find that, that out over the coming day. So bear with me on that if you're watching this a little bit later on. But Arsenal have gone in for Moises Caicedo and Brighton are quoting a price through various uh, sources of £90 million for the player. That is what they supposedly want to allow Moises Caicedo to leave. And when you think about it, that is crazy money. It really, really is. And it just kind of brings on sort of wider thoughts about the transfer market, where it's at today and how it's become so ridiculous that it just feels like, you know, unless you're going to spend billions and billions of pounds as a football club, you're going to find it very, very difficult to be right at the top of the table, at least consistently. There are a handful of football clubs uh, in the Premier League that can do that. Chelsea, Manchester City being a couple of them. Manchester United, you feel once their ownership situation gets resolved, uh, will have that type of spend as well. Um, you know, depending on who takes over, of course. But the point I'm trying to make here is that we were all so annoyed by the prospect of the Super League and we were all so disappointed about the way that come about and, and what that would have meant and the fact that it made or would have made the elite level of football a bit of a closed shop. Well, the Premier League is very much becoming its own Super League in a lot of ways. And you look at how some of the other leagues are now struggling to keep up, have fallen behind. Some reasons are their own fault. Some of those situations are of their own making. And I don't really have much sympathy there, but I do have sympathy when it comes to the the wider picture and, and the general kind of space that football finds itself in now. And the fact that the Premier League has become a Super League and it's left everybody else behind so much so that when you look at transfers between Premier League clubs and clubs outside of the Premier League who know that a Premier League club is interested in their player, the fees that we're hearing of and seeing exchanged are obscene. And, you know, I know that it's January um, again at the time of recording. I know that there is a mid-season premium when you're trying to take someone away from their club. It's a smaller window. It's a window that's notoriously more difficult for people to get business done. And so when clubs are faced with the prospect of losing a player in that window, they obviously want to get the maximum. But as I say, things have gotten out of hand. I mean, you think about how much Mudrick went for. You think about Anthony. You think about what Brighton are quoting for Caicedo now. And I'm not looking to dig out individual players or individual football clubs. This is more a discussion around the general picture of football. And it got me thinking, if Moises Caicedo is worth £90 million to Brighton, what is this current Arsenal starting eleven worth? How much can we value it at? And the fact that the value is what it is, what does that tell us about where this Arsenal team are at and the recruitment that we've done over the last few years? So these are my valuations. I'm going to give you the valuations uh, provided by transfermarkt.com, a website that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Uh, but I'm going to give you my valuations based on the way the market is today of Arsenal's best eleven. So that includes Ramsdale, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Partey, Xhaka, Odegaard, Saka, Jesus and Martinelli. We can all agree that would be Arsenal's starting eleven based on what we have at the time of recording if everybody was fit and available. So let's start off with the goalkeeper. Let's kick off with Aaron Ramsdale. According to Transfermarkt, he's worth €30 million, Euros, which translates on today's rate at £26.3 million. Pounds. When Arsenal signed Aaron Ramsdale, there were a lot of question marks about the amount of money that we paid. I remember sitting on this very show and saying, look, I don't really have a problem with us signing Aaron Ramsdale, but I do have a problem with us 
you know, not making a move for a midfielder and spending such a big amount of money on a goalkeeper when we had Bern Leno. You know, it, to me, it, it didn't really make an awful lot of sense at the time. But I think since Aaron Ramsdale's come in, you can see exactly why Arsenal have uh, have been willing and happy to invest such a huge amount of money on him. 24 years old, his best years are very much still ahead of him. I think you could argue that he's as transformative a goalkeeper as Alisson was to Liverpool. Now, obviously, Arsenal haven't gone on and won anything with him yet. But the point I'm trying to make is that the way he has changed the way we play, the, the way he enables Mikel Arteta to implement his style, the way he plays out from the back, I think it's essential to our style and to our philosophy. Therefore, you can understand why for Arsenal, he was worth more money than maybe other people uh, would have thought looking from the outside in. There is obviously that English premium uh, that comes into play as well. He was signed for around about £25 million uh, when uh, when Arsenal managed to get hold of him. And again, at the time, a lot of people felt that was a lot of money. Based on transfer marks value, he's only worth slightly more than that £24.6 million that Arsenal uh, again, according to Transfer Marked, paid for him. I make him worth at least £50 million right now because of how important he is to the team, because of all of those things I've mentioned, the way he can play the modern style of football quite comfortably. And I think we saw with Matt Turner at Manchester City, as good a shot stopper as he is and as good as he can be in all the other areas. He just doesn't have that composure, calmness and passing range that Aaron Ramsdale does from the back. So if Aaron Ramsdale enables you to play the way you want to play, that adds to his value. So for me, and feel free to agree or disagree in the comments, Aaron Ramsdale is worth £50 million in today's market. Taking it on, let's have a look at Ben White. 25 years old, versatile, the best right back in the league this season so far, and a fantastic centre-back too. Signed for £51.4 million in total uh, from Brighton and Hove Albion. Again, this is according to Transfer Mark. If Kukurea went for over £60 million to Chelsea, there's no way that White can be valued at anything less than £65 million. Can Kukurea play as well at centre-back as Ben White can? Absolutely not. Is he as strong as Ben White? Absolutely not. Uh, has he got a little bit more pace in terms of getting up and down the flanks? Maybe. But Ben White's versatility for me makes him a really valuable commodity, a really valuable asset. Transfer mark to have him down at 45 million euros, which translates to 39.5 million pounds, which suggests that Arsenal paid over 10 million pounds more than the player is currently worth today. I disagree with that. I think in today's market, Ben White is worth upwards of 65 million pounds based on all of those things I've mentioned and based on the valuations of similar players of similar age profiles who have moved to various clubs. Let's take it on to William Saliba, a 21-year-old Rolls-Royce of a centre-back. He's been at a really high level now, uh, obviously this season, but also last season as well, where he played very, very well uh, for Marseille. He's come into a tougher league in the Premier League and he's managed to translate that form for the most part very, very well. The only thing that kind of makes me reluctant to slap a massive price tag on William Saliba, I know a lot of Arsenal fans out there probably would, is of course his contract situation. That doesn't help us here, uh, but hopefully that will be resolved soon. Transfer marked have him valued at 50 million euros, which translates to 43.9 million pounds. I'm going to push that up to 50 million pounds, but with the caveat that once William Saliba signs a new deal, that will be significantly more. And I'll tell you why, because nowadays it feels as though where in the past you, you looked at a player and you looked at what they were capable of bringing to the table today and you valued them based on that. What we seem to see now is is more of a, a lean towards what the player is potentially going to be. And there seems to be more value in that today than there is in what a player is currently producing in terms of their level. So if we're looking at it that way, which I don't agree should always be the way, I think there should be some value placed on potential, of course, but potential is often unfulfilled. So I don't think that should be the sole basis and premise uh, of which a, a transfer fee is, is calculated. So Saliba, as I say, £50 million for me currently because of his contract situation, which at the time of recording is yet to be resolved. But going forward, if he does that, and signs that, there's no reason why that can't uh, skyrocket up. Moving on to his central defensive partner, Gabriel, valued by transfer marked at 40 million euros. That translates to 35.1 million pounds. He's 25 years old, 
which obviously works against him in comparison to William Saliba because of what I've just talked about. Uh, but he just seems to get better and better. He's superb uh, with progressing the ball out of the back line. He's incredibly athletic, scarily dominant physically. He's maturing all the time. I understand, as I say, why some would say that Saliba's worth more because of his age and because of, um, you know, because of his because of his potential, uh, because of Saliba's potential. But as I keep saying, I think the market is weighed way too much in favour of potential over what a player is currently producing. Gabriel right now is up there in the top three centre-backs in the Premier League, if he's not the best one on current form. I genuinely believe he's that good and that important to this Arsenal side. Taking it on, Alexander Zinchenko, 26 years old. The way he plays, you'd think he was older. He comes across as a bit of a veteran, but that is not the case with Alexander Zinchenko. Still just 26. And the way you've got to look at this is that, you know, based on the transfer marked price, which is 32 million euros, that translates into 28.1 million pounds. Is Kukurea double the left back that Alexander Zinchenko is? He absolutely isn't. This guy is technically superb. He's an incredibly decorated player with all the experience of winning some of the game's biggest prizes. He's mentally incredible. This valuation, a valuation of £28 million for Alexander Zinchenko is crazy. Arsenal, of course, signed him for around about £35 million. That is an absolute steal. Because if we win the league, partly due to this guy coming in, giving us the boost, the mentality that he brings, all of those other things, the experience, the leadership, then even the £50 million price tag that I've slapped on him is conservative when you think about what it's brought to the table. So Zinchenko, for me, currently is a £50 million player. Let's take it on to midfield and we'll start with Thomas Partey. Now, Thomas Partey is incredibly valuable to this team, but he does turn 30 in around about five, six months time. And I think in terms of his valuation, that will have an impact. Add to that, that he's had a number of injuries since coming here. I think clubs would be reluctant if we were to sell him, which we're obviously not. But if we were, uh, I think clubs would be reluctant to really go crazy on somebody like Thomas Partey. But when you think about what he brings to this team, how rare he is in his skill set, in the sense of he's incredibly mobile, he's incredibly good defensively, but he's a wonderful progressor of the ball as well. He's the perfect fit to this system. But it's a bit like trying to find a part of something that isn't made anymore. There aren't many Thomas Partey's around, and that does push his valuation up in my eyes. Transfer Mark have him valued at 38 million euros. Um, that's 33.3 million pounds. I have him valued at 45 million, which suggests that he's managed to maintain the value that we initially paid for him uh, because of how good and how important he's been when fit and available. Let's take it on to Granite Xhaka. Um, you can't really make the potential case for Granite Xhaka, right? You can't really slap loads of money on top of a valuation because of his potential. Because I honestly think that Granite Xhaka right now He's at his absolute best. He's at his absolute peak. 30 years old. Um, but of course, his game isn't reliant just on mobility. He does steer clear of injuries generally as well. Leadership uh, is a big thing for him. You know, the the sort of technical aspect as well uh, is something that he's really, really strong at. You know, I think when you look at, I know the market's gone nuts in, in a very short space of time, but I would like to think that Granite Xhaka's value today is pretty close to the value that we paid for him uh, back when we signed him at the start of the 12-13 season. Um, so 35, 40 million pounds is where I would put him at. Transfer mark to have him at 28 million euros, which translates to 24 million pounds. His contract hasn't got the longest amount of time to run on it, and maybe that plays a part as well. Uh, but that's where I am with Granite Xhaka. I'm going to I'm going to push him up to 40 million pounds again because of his importance to this Arsenal side and because the market is bloody mental. Let's take it on to Martin Odegaard. Transfer marked value him at 60 million euros. That translates to 52.7 million pounds. Captain Fantastic, 24 years old. He's got the type of football intelligence that you just don't find all that often. I think he's fantastic. Such a difficult quality to come by. One of the best players in the league. Um, hasn't hit his peak yet, as far as I'm concerned. Still loads more to come from him. Signed for 30 to 35 million pounds. That's an absolute steal now when you look back at him. The transfer marked valuation, um, in my opinion, is laughable. 
uh, 60 million euros, which translates to 52.7 million pounds. This guy's got eight Premier League goals and six assists in his 18 Premier League appearances so far this season. And he's so key to the way we play. I'm slapping an 80 million pound price tag on Martin Odegaard. No one's going to convince me that Declan Rice, for example, is worth more than Martin Odegaard. Generally speaking, attacking players, attack minded players tend to cost that little bit more anyway. Maybe I'm even being conservative here, but Martin Odegaard for me is at minimum an £80 million player today. Bukayo Saka, transfer marked value him at €100 million. Euros. That translates to £87.8 million. Not only is this guy supremely talented, though, he's a central figure to this Arsenal project, which means he's even more valuable to us. He's very much becoming a poster boy of English football. And we've talked about that English premium thing already. Homegrown academy product, which to us makes him even more valuable. He's almost the example of what you can be at Arsenal if you have the talent and you work hard. 21 years old. Obviously, his contract situation at the moment is not ideal for us, but we are working on that. Seven goals and seven assists in 19 games in the Premier League so far this season. Transfer marked have him at £87.8 million. I think, again, when you look at what Mikhailo Mudrik just went for and you compare that or you compare him in terms of how proven he is to Bukayo Saka, I don't think it's outrageous to say that Bukayo Saka is worth £120 million. Moving on, Gabriel Jesus, a 25-year-old four-time Premier League winner, uh, contracted at Arsenal till 2027, which obviously works in our favour. Is he as clinical as Erling Haaland? No, but he brings so much to the team and he's worth his weight in gold. Um, he's experienced, he's versatile, can play in the wide areas as well. He's got plenty of years ahead of him and we paid around about £50 million to bring him to Arsenal Football Club. Transfer marked having valued at €75 million. Euros. That translates and converts to £65 million. I've got him down right now in today's market. When you think about how few centre forwards there are and how much they're going for. I've got him down as a £75 million player. Let's take it on to Gabriel Martinelli. Uh, 21 years old, just signed a new contract extension, we're told. We're going to get an announcement on that very, very shortly at the time of recording, hopefully. Seven goals in the Premier League this season, explosive in everything he does. He's been described by many managers as an absolute weapon and not in the bad sense, in the good sense. Uh, he's tenacious. He's a bit of an old school direct winger in a lot of ways. And there aren't that many players of his nature around anymore. It reminds me of Luis Suarez or uh, Alexis Sanchez in their peak, the way he's so driven and, and sort of at times a little bit narrow minded. He just sees the, the space he wants to attack and he goes. You know, I think the rarity of his skill set, again, adds a lot. And the fact that Arsenal signed him for £6 million means that we're in a great position with regards to him now. Transfer marked, value him at 60 million euros. I value him at 50, uh, sorry, at 70 million pounds. So that's about 18 million pounds more than the 52.7 million uh, that transfer marked have him at. So those are my valuations. I'll just quickly run through those once more. Ramsdale, 50 million pounds. Ben White, 65 million pounds. Saliba, 50 million pounds. Gabriel, 60 million pounds. Zinchenko, 50 million pounds. Partey, £45 million. Xhaka, £40 million. Odegaard, £80 million. Saka, £120 million. Jesus, £75 million. And Martinelli, £70 million. So that starting 11, by my calculations, by my valuations, is worth £705 million in total. We are sitting on an absolute gold mine. What does that tell you about our recruitment over the last few years? That it has been superb. Because when you look at those valuations, it's very rare that we've paid anywhere near that money to get those players in, right? So, Aaron, I know, and I know the market's changed over year, over the years. So, obviously, you have to factor that in as well. Um, but people like Ramsdale, he's worth probably double what we paid for him now. And that wasn't so long ago. Ben White is definitely worth in excess of what we paid for him. You could say the same about Saliba, definitely on Gabriel, definitely on Zinchenko. Partey, maybe not. It's probably around about the same. Xhaka as well, uh, about, around about the same. But Odegaard is probably worth more than double what we paid for him. Saka cost us absolutely nothing. Martinelli cost us £6 million. And Jesus, who cost us £50 million, is certainly uh, worthy of that uh, price tag nowadays. So £705 million is the total value that I make it 
um, of that starting eleven. So now you can understand why I think that paying £90 million pounds plus for the likes of Mudrik or Caicedo is mental. Are we trying to say that Caicedo is worth double Thomas Partey? Is he double as good as Thomas Partey? Is he worth two Thomas Partey's? He's absolutely not, which is why £90 million pounds is mental. Are we saying that he's better than more than two Granite Jackers? No, he's not. Not at this stage in his career. So this is the problem again. The market at the moment is weighted too heavily in favour of potential as opposed to the level that a player is actually at. And potential is never guaranteed. It's never guaranteed to materialise into anything. And that's the problem that you've got here. Equally, you know, you sign players from one club to another and sometimes they don't live up to the same level that they produced at a previous club. I get all of that. But potential is such a, a great thing when it comes off, but it can also be a non-existent thing. And I feel like the market is weighted way too heavily in its favor. And that's my big problem with today's transfer market. Hope you've enjoyed the content. Uh, if you are watching this on the YouTube channel or listening on the main feed uh, a few days after we've released it to our members and you want to get access to this type of content really uh, early on, uh, earlier than everybody else, if you enjoyed it, if you want to hear more, see more, uh, then please do uh, make sure that you head over to Another Slice and join up to our membership scheme. Thank you all so, so much. We'll be back very soon with more. Cheers. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.